Hello beautiful people, happy new year once again. Welcome to my channel. I hope all is well with you guys. I am Kenichi. Now for those of you who already subscribed to me, you're like, huh, what? I thought your name was Kiki. Okay, so this is the thing. My real name is Kenichi, my nickname is Kiki, and I did a Get Ready With Me video in which I did a poll, and I was asking people what name they thought I should go with because I felt like I was betraying God and myself by going by my nickname and not Kenichi, which means, thank God. People said Kenichi. So, welcome to Kenichi Awkward. It's a new year, it's the real me, and we're gonna go from here. So, since it's 2019, I was looking to see what kind of videos I really wanted to do and I realized I've been on here and I have not done a get to know me tag. That is ridiculous. So, it's 2019 like I said and it's time we familiarize ourselves with each other. I really want you guys to know me for me. So yeah, I thought the tag would be fun. I asked my following on Instagram, for some questions that they would ask to get to know people. So I got some questions from there and the rest I pulled from the internet. So let's get into it. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram at Kimichi Awkwards. Before we get started, I have some tea here. You know, I have a little bit of, this might seem TMI, <laughs> a little bit of gas, so I'm burping a lot. And I have some peppermint tea, which really helps to get it out, you know? It tastes so good, guys, so good. Also, I'm on this diet, so I'm not eating as much. Ah, oh, so good. Tea helps to curb your appetite a little bit. Sorry if you guys hear me slurping. I'm not the queen, darling. Anyway, so the first question, what is my name? So, my name is Kimichi, and it means thank God, as I was telling you guys. How did I get that name? Well, my mom had a really, really rough pregnancy. It was a life or death thing, and she had a Nigerian doctor. Some of you are probably like, yes, Kenichi, Kelechi, Kenechi. That is an African name. That was a really bad <laughs> accent, but yes, it is indeed an African name. It's an Igbo name to be specific, and uh, she just had a Nigerian doctor and the doctor was like, hey, you know, thank God you guys both survived. Name her Kenichi. So that's where it comes from. I am not Igbo, I am not Nigerian. Which brings us to the next question. Where are you from? So I am from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm gonna put a picture of where we're located on the map because a lot of people don't know where Trinidad is. And I'm not judging you because I'm not good with geography. But, I mean, I would say it's kind of a popular island with carnival and limbo and steel pan and everything. But, you know, it could just be because I'm Trini. I'm thinking we're all that in a bag of chips, you know. But anyway, so yeah, we're a tiny little island. So this is map of the world. This is the United States. I'm currently in California, but we're located next to South America. So you come down, come down all the way down towards Venezuela. I like to use Venezuela as a reference point. And we zoom in and there we are. Trinidad and this even tinier island is Tobago. And if we zoom out, you'll be able to see that we're the last island in the chain of Caribbean islands. And if we zoom out all the way, you can barely even see us. We're like a little dot, but we make a big impact on the world, I like to say. So that's Trinidad and Tobago, my friends. And uh, yeah, so how did I have a Nigerian doctor? Well, my mom had a Nigerian doctor. You know, people go all over to practice medicine and all of that. Where did you grow up? So I lived in Trinidad until I was 12 years old and then I moved to New York City and this is where it gets weird because I lived in the Bronx, New York, but I went to school in Harlem. So every single friend I had except for one person, I had one friend that lived in the Bronx and that was it. But every single friend that I had, every single event that I went to, I shopped in, everything was all in Harlem. So I feel as though I grew up in Harlem and Harlem raised me. I am who I am because of Harlem. I know nothing of the Bronx. Like besides the area that I lived in, only when I got a little bit older, I started really, really shopping in the Bronx. So I would say Trinidad and Harlem, but I just laid my head, you know, sleepy, sleepy 
in the Bronx. And it took me a while to actually be able to admit that I was raised somewhere other than Trinidad because for the longest I'm like, I'm Trini. I'm, I am Trini. I am not American. I am not a New Yorker. I am Trinidadian, okay? But I've come to realize that, listen, I'm a Trini American and I have to accept both. And both have made me who I am today. What is your favorite color? So my favorite color is green and it's green like money, baby. No, 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 I'm kidding. So I just think of green signifies life. It signifies growth. Um, green, it's flowing. It's just positive things come to mind when I think of the color green. But the real reason I ended up liking green, because my original favorite color was yellow, is the system in Trinidad, this educational system. For those of you who don't know, we were colonized by England and our educational system mimics uh, the UK. So we have forms and standards. We have houses. Um, it's like Harry Potter. You know how you have Slytherin, Gryffindor, whatever, whatever. They place each person in a house. Yes. So primary school, we had green house, blue house, yellow house, and red house. And they put me in yellow first, so yellow was my favorite color. Then they moved me to greenhouse, and of course green was gonna be my favorite color because, hey, I'm rooting for the green team when it comes to sports day. Then when I got to high school in Trinidad, crazily enough, I also got placed in the greenhouse. So yeah, green has been my color. When is your birthday? My birthday is November 18th. And I always loved my birthday month until I moved to America and I realized, I don't know what accent is this, let me sup. <laughs> I realized that it gets, it's, it's cold for my birthday. I can't do anything. I wanna go out in a cute little dress and stuff. I have to have a big bulky coat on. It's no fun having your birthday in the winter. So yeah, I am Scorpio. I know what you're thinking. No, I'm not vindictive, no. I am not, well, secretive. Not in a mean way, just in a not everything is everybody's business kind of way. So that's what I'm gonna say. Did you go to college? I did go to college. I went to two colleges actually. Um, how that happened, my mom, I got accepted to schools that you would go away, but for financial reason, mainly because my mom didn't think um, I should move for my first year. She convinced me to stay at home. And the main reason she was able to do that because your first year, you have communal bathrooms. And I was not sharing a bathroom with multiple nasty people. I am very scornful. I have a lot of little quirks. And see, mm, just thinking about it now, I still probably would not be able to do it. So it was very easy to convince me to say no. So after that, I so I went to Lehman College, which, which is in the Bronx, New York, and then I transferred to Baruch College, which is in Manhattan. What's your favorite hobby? So my favorite hobby currently is just learning. I wanna learn photography, I'm learning uh, Adobe, all their products like Photoshop, Premiere, after Effects, I wanna become a master. I wanna be the very best that no one yeah, so I want to be that. Do you speak another language? Unfortunately, no, and I'm really upset by that for multiple reasons. I think it's very, very important to be able to speak another language. I feel like it just helps you. Being able to think in another language, you're able to understand the world and uh, from a different perspective, and I think it really widens your mind. Um, it was my goal to be fluent in French and Spanish, and that's what I studied in college. But I stopped practicing, and I forgot I forgot almost everything about French. I remember a lot about Spanish, but I would struggle. But if someone speaks Spanish to me, I'm gonna understand. As far as thinking and speaking for myself, or writing it, it's gonna be a struggle for me now until like I start practicing again. Um, but I am fluent in another English dialect, and like I said, a Trinidadian, right? So yeah, I hate when people say, oh, speaking your Trini accent, because then I have to think about something to say. Uh, da, 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 da. 
a caretaking. That's there we go. A caretaking. So it just means I cannot. Obviously, a caretaking. I can't think about anything right now, but moving on, let's, well, actually, you know what? Let's do the rest of this video in my Trini accent. I'll try to remember because <laughs> usually it's only if I'm speaking to a Trini person or another Caribbean person because I don't want anybody else saying, what, what, are you speaking English? Because then I have to say, yes, the hell I am speaking English. Why you can't understand? Da, 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 and it, it just upsets me. Yeah. So anyway, we'll do the rest of the video in the Trini accent. I'll try to remember. What is your favorite book? Okay, my favorite book is Harry Potter. Duh! I mean, who doesn't love Harry Potter? These kids these days, they have no idea what they're missing. But Harry Potter is everything and more. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Okay, so, um, the first time I read Harry Potter, I was... I think I was... Hmm, 10, 11... I just remember coming on vacation from Trinidad to New York City because before I moved here to live, I would just visit and spend summers here. And my mom, every summer that I came, she would give me the new Harry Potter book to read. And I just, I just loved it. I would not leave the house. Sometimes I wouldn't shower. I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't do anything. I would take, if I had to use the toilet, I would go with the book and I would be like, while I'm using the toilet because I didn't want to put it down. It was so good. JK Rowling, I, I love her. Genius. Okay. All right. So what are my interests? My interests are traveling and traveling. In, it just, it covers all my interests because it's so much to see and do. I know it is small, but there is so much to see. So many tribes cultures societies beliefs it's never ending so if i could just spend my life uh, going to a different place every month learning something new i would but you know that's not really realistic right now are you single married or dating i am married you guys who are subscribed to me know that already to my loving husband i'm lucky i'm very blessed to have him in my life so you know that's why that's why i married him anyway <laughs> who is my best friend my best friend again my husband and that seems so cliche to say and i know this for a fact because i've been down that road where you feel pressure to say your spouse is your best friend when they in fact are not i've been in relationships where i lied before and i'm like yeah He's my best friend. You're my best friend. But I didn't really mean it. I was their best friend because I acted as such. But I didn't really think they acted like a best friend to me. But my husband, I feel like he treats me like a best friend should. So he has that title and I mean it. Next question. Who would you tell first if you found a dead buddy in your garden? I would tell... So if it was just a random dead body, I would call 911. You know, as I don't want things you guys need to know about me. I don't want to go to jail for, for anything, okay? So if I come across a dead body and I had nothing to do with it, I am calling 911 right away. Well, once I get up from fainting and freaking out and all of that, then I'll call 911. If it's something I did, Let's just say I lose my mind and I snap or something and I hurt somebody, I killed somebody. Um, I would tell my husband. <laughs> he probably would turn me in, which I would not blame him. Because like I said, I'm not going to jail for nobody, so I don't expect anybody to go to jail for me. But um, yeah, he would be the first person I tell because I think I would trust him more than I would trust anybody else to, to keep it a secret. Like right off the bat, I, I know everybody else is gonna give me up. Him, he'll give me up, right? But I don't know, maybe he might give me some time to run or some shit. <laughs> I don't know. I should probably ask him, right? Mm -hmm. Let me let me ask him. Sean, I need to ask you a serious question. You don't have to come on camera. Yeah. Um, so if I kill somebody, right, mm -hmm. and I put the body in our garden, and I came and I told you, what would you do? 
Honestly. Well, I know what you do. What would I do? Go straight to the police. Okay. What would you do? If I told you I killed a person and I put I put them in our garden. I don't know. I don't think I go straight to the police. Would you turn me in? I don't know. You, he doesn't know. So. I, know I know your answer though. Because so. I'm not going to jail for anybody. Well, it depends. Did you kill somebody in my defense? Was Did you kill somebody in self-defense? It depends on why you killed the person. I don't know. Actually, maybe I might not turn you in. But if it can't, if we got caught, though, then yeah, I'm snitching. But see what I was... Yeah, see what I was telling you guys, though, that... He doesn't even know if he would turn me in. So that w- that's why he would be the first person I tell. Anybody else? I know for a fact my ass get turned in. So, yeah, he would be the first person and only person. Usually, though, things like that, I probably wouldn't even tell him because I wouldn't, I wouldn't want him to become an accomplice. So. Oh, look at you, <laughs> I forget to talk in my Trini accent again. I don't know what's going on with me. But, um... Damn it, that's so hard. So this video is going to be all over. You see, even now it's all over the place. Jesus Christ. Okay. So, favorite movie. My favorite movie. Well, I have five favorite movies. The first one is Sister Act 2 with Whoopi Goldberg and Lauren Hill. And I could watch that movie over and over and over and over and over again. Um... Yeah, so joyful, joyful Lord. And when Jesus watched. Yeah. Oh, you know that note, right? So, yeah, that's my favorite, what, first favorite movie. In no particular order, it just depends on my mood. I can't decide which one I like more. So, Sister Act 2, then Titanic. And come on, why? Duh, Titanic, the song, the romance. Is right up my alley because I'm a hopeless romantic. Then we have the most stereotypical chick flick ever, The Notebook. And the story just makes me melt. I could, tr- I could cry thinking about it. But it's the sweetest love story ever. And I just, I don't know, I just love it. Then we have The Lion King. And The Lion King is the first movie I ever remember seeing in movie theaters. So, yeah. And it's it's really well done. I actually just watched it, I think, last week. It's so good. I'm so excited for them to have the revamped vision in 2019 with Beyonce and stuff. I really hope it's good because it's such a classic. They better not mess it up. So, Beyonce, I hope you brought your A-game. I would say the fifth one is The Sound of Music. I love 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 anything that could i could sing to i can't sing but i love to sing along to stuff so yeah favorite kind of music i don't have a favorite kind of music i love a little of everything of course i like soca for those of you who don't know music comes from trinidad and tobago you might know marshall montano you might know destra so i love soca i love some dancehall wine and get on bad in you know so sean paul buju buju just got released good for him uh lady so really really love lady so so anyway um i don't you know what i'm not really a fan of new rap old rap yes i love r&b especially i'm talking about back in the day r&b we're talking mariah carey monica uh mario even brandy just a a lot of these people that i grew up on i can name more of the music i don't like i don't like uh metal rock i've tried numerous times to try but that it's just is i I can't do it Mm -mm, not for me next question who is my favorite person dead or alive (sighs) <sighs> my favorite person is my deceased godmom, Dora. <laughs> I used to call her Auntie Gracie. Her, her, the name she went by was Gracie. And I, to be honest with you guys, I don't ever say her name out loud like that. That's why it's just like, Ooh. 
kind of thing. She was uh, my bestest friend. She passed when I was 12 years old. So if you put two and two together, you would realize I, she died and I ended up moving to America because her death really, really impacted me. Um, man, I was devastated and I wouldn't wish that feeling on anybody. That is just, whew, that was tough. That was tough. And as you guys see, like even, uh, <laughs> oh, whew, okay. So, um, hmm. I don't know why this is still like, like I said, I never really say her name out loud. So, um, yeah, but the reason she was my favorite person is because I had a very interesting childhood. So as I've said before, I was a very loud child, very outgoing, outspoken child. And the way I was raised, you would, you were supposed to always tell the truth. No matter good, bad, indifferent, you tell the truth. So if I did something wrong, I would speak up and I would tell the truth. However, in my life, I've been blamed for a lot of things and gotten in trouble for a lot of things that I didn't actually do. And although when I would do something wrong, I would say, okay, I did it. I deserve whatever punishment, even if it meant getting up ass whooping i would take it because you know i disobeyed parents or teachers or whatever i would take it but when i would speak up and say listen i actually didn't do this thing i was never believed and uh that was rough for me because you're supposed to tell the truth but when you tell the truth and you still get in trouble it kind of makes you feel isolated and make it, it just it does a lot of things and I'm not just talking about home it happened in school too I think it was just easier for people to look at me as a bad person because I was loud and out there so you know it's easy to say yeah you did this whereas a lot of the times the quieter ones are the sneaky ones they're the sneaky bitches so um yeah she was the only person who always always had my back and always believed me because she knew that I was a truthful child. She, like I said, she was really, really my best friend. I was 12, she was 63. She raised me my whole uh, life. And we, would, I could tell her about my crushes at 12. I can, uh, we used to come home, we would watch soap operas together, like Passions, Days of Our Lives, Bold and Beautiful. What grown person you know is watching a, a soap opera with um, a little child? If you guys realize, I'm switching between accents. I have to keep remembering that I'm supposed to be speaking Trini right now. But anyway, yeah. So and and also, she just like I said, she always believed me. You know, she would also check me. Don't get it twisted. I've gotten my ass whooped from her numerous times okay she was my friend but she was also a parent figure and she never treated me like i was not her kid she would tell everyone i was her daughter my god brother and god sister they were like they are my brothers and and my sister you know so that was i i always felt alone and isolated at everywhere else and when i was with them i just felt like i belonged i felt safe if you know what i mean so when she passed i uh, it it rocked my entire world because i was like oh shit, i'm alone in the world who's gonna have my back and funny story she believed me so much and she trusted me to tell the truth so much that I vividly remember the only time that I lied to her. And it was something that I did with um, one of her uh, other family members. It was my idea. We got caught. We got in trouble. And because I did not want to disappoint her, I lied. I did get, we both, we both got our ass whooped. But I lied and I said it was the other girl's idea when it wasn't. And she believed me and said that the girl was a bad influence on me. And that for the longest after my head. Because that made me feel like a really shitty person. Because I was witnessing somebody else who hadn't done anything wrong. Being treated the way people used to treat me. You know, um... And that, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. That, that lived with me. Because <laughs> it's just like damn seeing it from the outside you see how effed up it really is you know so i never lied to her again if you could eliminate one weakness what would it be hmm 
No, quite a few. I would say anxiety. That is really a weakness. Anxiety and fear could cripple you at times. And I would absolutely get rid of that because let me tell you guys, I would be freaking Jeff Bezos up in this bitch if I had no anxiety and fear, probably. Like, um, I don't know. I would just be free and, and I would feel weightless if I didn't have anxiety. Last question. Where do you see yourself in five years? And I absolutely hate this question because who knows, right? So I see myself, well, actually, I be, I'm very superstitious and I believe in speaking stuff into existence and putting it out there, but not necessarily for the whole world to see because a lot of people, they're too bad mind, okay? And I don't want anybody mal Joe and the, the whatever on my dreams and stuff. So maybe I'm not going to put that out there, but I could tell you guys what I would want for YouTube. I would have hoped to have grown a lot on YouTube and this is not everything else in my life. I'm just, talk, talk, just talking about YouTube in five years. I would have hoped to share my story, like the real stuff, because you know, I do a little makeup, do a little hauls and stuff, but that's not what I'm really, really passionate about. So I would have hoped to interview a lot of people and spoken about real topics like depression, sex, because you know, sex is an important topic, people. Um, sex, uh, credit, finances, just lots of things that you know a lot of people they're not really educated about or they don't really have people that they could talk to about these things so i would have hoped to share a lot of that and talked about the real shit that i've i've i've, I've gone through which you know takes a lot of courage for me i'll get there eventually i don't know how soon but i would hope in five years i would have done it and that is it guys that was all the questions i'm sorry i was a little scatterbrained and stuff i had a lot of moving parts you know i gasped but i feel a lot better with the um peppermint tea so i hope you guys learned a little bit more about me maybe i'll do some more with some better questions if there's something that you guys want to know about me in particular nothing creepy folks nothing creepy put it in the comment section below and i would maybe do another one all right guys so this is the end of this video Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in the other one. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care. Bye.